Chris finished on it, uh, and I'm going to sort of open with it in terms of my wrap-up, and that is that the critical control room world is changing faster and faster. I think that's come across to all of us quite loud and clear today. Faster and faster. Many applications and services to consume. Big questions around how do we do that. Uh, many ways that we can deliver those, those joined up services, the, the better presentation to the agent. We've heard plenty of them today. Uh, personally, uh, not quite understanding what was being meant by AV when I first uh, took this job. Um, it's becoming clearer. Um, and many of today's control rooms are still, for me, not capitalizing on it. There's, there's a lot of instances. Now, of course, you will, those who are, who are left here who are control room uh, uh, bosses, uh, you are obviously the ones who are capitalizing because you're here. And that's a good thing. Uh, so keep doing that. But today, you know, we've discussed a lot of things. We've talked about KVM which I have to confess, I thought was key variable management when I first walked in the door this morning, for those of you with a crypto background, uh, but I've now learned differently. Uh, solution integration, collaboration's been said a few more times this afternoon, which I'm very pleased about. Uh, 5G delivering more, and I think that's absolutely fundamental truth. Um, you know, we're going to be swamped with even more stuff as it comes online. Remote operations, okay? Uh, we've had our eyes open to various remote operations today. Um, holograms being thought about. CCR ergonomic design has come through loud and clear, uh, and the importance of doing that. Um, you know, keeping the staff satisfied, you invest a lot of time and a lot of money in those people. And change management goes hand in hand with that, and that's got a good airing today as well. This market is getting more and more professionalized. Uh, 20 years ago, it's no joke, I, I was a consultant in those days, and I'd go around doing uh, control room studies for customers, and I would, I would witness steel desks of that variety. You had the big pull-out steel drawer and the four legs and that kind of stuff, and there were steel desks and normal chairs, the slidey ones that you'd go around on 20 years ago, okay? And, and horrible things going on in those control centers. There, you know, there'd be policemen coming in swinging truncheons and things and, and putting their feet up and, and sticking their chewing gum on the outskirts of the screen. It's just not on. We are now much, much more professionalized. Uh, okay, everybody has worked out that this is the right way to handle customer engagement, and it's very, very good these days. But there's been a huge speed of change. Um, you've got to be open to change, and a lot of you, are, I forget again the words that Chris used earlier on, but uh, you're in the top tier, so that's good news for you. Um, but look, you know, it's all leading still to operator overload and stress. Okay, that is coming through loud and clear as well. And, you know, <coughs> that's why ICRA matters, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last plug of the day for ICRA, the International Critical Control Rooms Alliance. ICRA matters because it's not just here to talk about um, some of the things we talked about today, like the technology. Uh, it is there to talk about operations, uh, different case studies, learning what other people do, recognizing you're the same, same, but different. We all talk about ergonomics at, um, uh, 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 right across the board, ergonomics at all levels, and the people issues. You know, ICRA is, is probably unique in that it tries to address the people issues as well. Uh, motivation of staff, retention of staff, staff welfare, uh, mental health, all these kind of things in the control room. So if, if you're involved in that in your control rooms, then you really should be considering getting involved with ICRA. Anyhow, I'd like to say thanks to a few people as we close off the day. Um, I want to say thanks to the team at the back and uh, round behind. The, it's like the Wizard of Oz around here, this guy. He lives behind a blue curtain, okay, and he, and he, he kind of bu buttons you up with stuff. Anyway, man behind the curtain, thank you to you as well and to all the, the crew at the back. Yeah, right on. I want to say thanks to the ISE team and the VIXA for the invitation to chair this, uh, this uh, inaugural event. Uh, it's been a great privilege to do that. Now I want to ask you something really, and that is, has this summit, has this summit hit the right spot for you? Uh, it's the first time it's been run, so it would be wrong not to ask you for a bit of feedback. Uh, is the tone right? Is the subject covered to the expected depth um, that you were thinking about? Um, other such things. I notice these days people don't tend to leave those forms on the chairs and stuff and say fill in all your, your bits and pieces. But look, if you've got anything you want to say, either email ISE directly, and if you haven't got their details, you can email me. Uh, and it's very simple. It's just peter.prater at hexagon.com. If anything you want to feedback, do it there, and I'll be happy to pass it on. So it just leaves me to say thank you for your attention um, uh, throughout the day. It's been great. I've appreciated the interaction with you. Uh, and I'm uh, uh, assured that there's still coffee and refreshments available outside. So go forth, enjoy ISE 2020 with my blessing, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.